Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at a couple of Gerber remixes. All these knives have something in common. Number one, they're all made by Gerber. Second is they all have this axis hole right here. And that's the key element of these knives, what set these knives apart from all others. Other similarities are the type of grind that's on these blades. They're all hollow grind. And the blade material on all three, they are 7CR17 MOV steel, which is the equivalent to 440A, but made in China which leads us to the next similarity. These are all made in China. I'm going to start off with the standard Gerber Remix. It came in this box right here. Purchased it at Walmart for the unbelievable low price of $24. And uh, we'll take a close look here at the packaging. You can see the model number. This is the fine edge. They do have a partially serrated version that you can get with um, instead of this fine edge. Now, what stands out is the hole. <laughs> this, this is what makes the knife. And I'll tell you, I really resisted buying any of these knives for over a year. And um, I, I finally just pulled the trigger on it because it, it really is something unique. And it, it really warrants a video to really show off some of the things you could do because it has this hole. Technically, it's referred to by Gerber as the axle hole, but I've heard it referred to as the finger hole or the open pivot hole <laughs> but whatever you want to call it it really offers some very unique grips or grip options that you really don't have with some other knives now besides a grip you could also put a carabiner in there if you just want to stow it but the grips what can you do well you get this grip which really feels very different and you can see how your hand is angled where it's almost like a uh, a handle on a gun or grip on a gun so it, it really gives you a really strong grip and there's some jumping right up here where your your thumb goes so you really get a good solid grip now I thought because your fingers like in there like this you could break your finger while you're stabbing but I went ahead and tried that and you know depending on how deep you get your finger it could hurt but if you hold it really tight and you you pull your finger finger out like this don't have it all the way in there like that but sort of out like that you can you could stab pretty deep without breaking your finger now if you're not doing some gross motor skills there you could do some extremely fine work with this knife by holding it like this and you can see how close your your fingers are getting to this edge and what that allows you to do is some very fine whittling work where you could get very close to this edge and really do some some fine work it really is incredible because you just don't find too many knives that allow you to do this I can't think of too many at all but you can really do some fine whittling and, and with a 2.9 inch <laughs> drop point blade to be able to do that kind of fine work it, you know to me is incredible reverse grip is not too shabby Again, because the handle does angle down just a little bit, your thumb could just roll over and you have a good reverse grip there if need be. So again, the blade, 2.9 inches. It is a drop point, plain edge, or partially serrated version is available. You have a hollow ground or a half hollow grind. comes up halfway, so you have some place to mount your sharpening kit so you have to kind of clamp onto the top of the blade blade material is Gerber Mystery Steel. It's a stainless steel. It's 7 CR17 MOV, which is a Chinese equivalent of our 440A. You have uh, stainless steel liners. They are um, open or skeletonized with a nice pattern that you can see through the handle, which is aluminum. It has a titanium nitrite coating around here. You um, get a lanyard hole right here 
you have a clip that's uh, not extremely strong but you know I've carried this for about a week and it, it does fine it didn't slip out of my pocket you can't move it anywhere other than where it is so all you have is tip up right handed carry is your only option you do have dual ambidextrous thumb studs again you have some jipping up here overall weight is 4.2 ounces and yeah it's it's made in China all of these knives are made in China but um, it's hold, held up pretty good and uh, points okay now I've cut paper cardboard and some bags of soil with this and we could see how well it's held up it did come out of the box very sharp and it continues to, to be sharp however 17 CR or 7 CR 17 MOV is not known for great edge retention and it's also not known for great corrosion and rust resistance so if you look at some reviews and you look at some other videos out there on uh, the tubes you'll, you'll see that some folks have experienced uh, a lot of rust with this knife when put in a high moisture environment and again it doesn't hold a, an edge too well but the, the good point of it is that it sharpens very easily and it can really take a razor's edge very easily. Now this is the second generation of this knife. There was a first generation that did not have the liner lock. Instead it had a slide lock right up here and you would you know pull it back. You know there are other knives that had this kind of knife uh, type of lock but you would pull back here and then you'd be able to fold it. And the problem was that there was um, I guess some of it might have been made out of plastic or some very weak metal and they would break very easily. So Gerber seeing that there was a problem uh, changed over to the liner lock. Now I have a problem <laughs> with their new lock and that is this blade stop. Take a close look at this. Now this might seem to be a standard blade stop but to me it looks very very then, like, let's take a look. Here I have my old Kershaw Storm. This was a knife that I used to carry around a lot. This is discontinued. Look at the difference between the blade stops. Look how thin <laughs> this is compared to most normal blade stops, which are usually much thicker. And, you know, I probably wouldn't have even noticed this, but when I was in the store purchasing this at Walmart, um, the first one I pulled out of the box that I was inspecting this blade stop was actually bent, sort of bent like a smiley face right there. Probably because it got pushed really hard by the blade. Or, I don't know, something else in the manufacturing process screwed it up. But, I would feel a lot more comfortable if that were thicker. Now, I haven't tested this to see how strong that is. Um, again, my use over the last week has been paper, cardboard, and soil. So, let's see how well this thing works as far as stabbing and we can also sort of test out make sure that holds up pretty good Ooh, <laughs> that actually went all the way through right there so for those of you who, who sort of felt that having your finger in that hole could be dangerous and you could break your finger well if, if you're holding the knife correctly you don't need to worry about that. If you try to jam your finger all the way in there where you have your knuckle pressed up against that and you you hit very hard. Sorry about that. Um, you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself right there. So be careful. The other thing is that if you're in a knife fight your, your finger is in there and if something happens you could break your finger. So there are some very good points to this and there are some very bad points to this. Speaking of bad points when you first buy this, um, it comes very, very stiff. You're going to be sitting there like, ah, you got to pry it open, and then it's like real gritty, 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 and you're going to sit there and try to pop it open with your thumb, and you're almost going to cut your finger on that blade because it's so stiff, and the detent to allow this, you know, to unlock this blade is just super super strong. I don't know if it's because the liner is pressing very hard 
or if the little bearing in there that sort of locks into the blade when it closes is too big and uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about the blade detent you can see that ball right in there in the liner right in there and you'll see it push the liner outward right there see that so now the detent is under that blade or under the shoulder of the blade or the tang of the blade whatever you want to call it and then eventually it, there's a little hole in there that it's going to sort of go into and you can see the liner slightly pop in close to the blade there as it locks in and it's very very strong out of the box and I had to do this like a thousand times I'm not kidding like a thousand times I just did that also oil this all in here and then down in there to try to just smooth it out and to sort of make that detent where you could finally get it open um, I still got to use a little uh, wrist action there but it can be done you'll think it's impossible when you first get this knife really really crazy so that is the Gerber Remix Standard. Next we'll move on to the Gerber Mini Remix. Now this one I didn't carry, so you get to experience um, how tight <laughs> how tight that could be to, to break it loose. And it's still pretty stiff. Just to show you how stiff it is, you can see how it's moving. It's so gritty. It's really hard for you to feel it through the, the power of YouTube and video, but you could, I'm not doing that on purpose. It's, it's just gritty. And again, the D10 is very tight here, and it doesn't help that your finger could possibly press against the frame lock there and make it even harder. You gotta like try to get your finger behind this clip here, and then push out and actually that that does make it easier right there now you do get the hole now it is smaller so if you got big sausage fingers you might not even be able to get your <laughs> your index finger in there um, all depends now this is a open frame design and here is the frame lock you sort of push right in here and some other frame lock, open frame lock designs, usually it's the bottom one right here, but the downside to that is if you're gripping the knife, you could inadvertently take the lock off. But because this has this extra piece of, of steel here, you don't have to worry about um, pushing that lock. On, but the downside to that is it's not the most comfortable knife to, to really grip really hard with because it's so straight and, and hard and, and, and you, know, you get those edges right there. But, so let's talk about the details real quick. This is a two inch sheep's foot blade. You have half grind and it comes, uh, this is the plain edge. I believe it comes in a serrated version also. It does come very sharp out of the box. No problem there. The steel is 7CR17 MOV. The frame is mostly stainless steel you do got this aluminum strip right here and what this strip does is when you fold the knife up the edge goes into there and it's held pretty good it's not going to open up in your pocket that detail is pretty strong so you don't have to worry about it opening up you have a clip you can't move it anywhere it's where it is right hand to carry tip up you do get a generous lanyard hole right there and this, um, I already talked about the aluminum, or if they technically it's anodized aluminum, but it's you know it's aluminum, steel, open frame. I think I got it all covered. Ambid well, you don't get an ambidextrous thumb stud there. You just get right-handed. So this really is right-handed only. You do not get an ambid. And the reason why you can't have a thumb stud on that other side is because the nature of the way this blade is designed, obviously. You, you just can't put it there. So, made in China. Got it at Kmart. It was being clearanced out for 10 bucks. Normally this thing is probably about $15. And before we move on, 
give you the weight it is 2.2 ounces so it's really light again deep carry you see how that clip comes all the way to the top so you barely know it's in your pocket so you you know it just would make just a good utility blade to carry on you and if you're around people that are very sensitive about large pointy things this is sort of subdued and kind of unique <laughs> kind of neat and, and people will warm up to it a little bit more so um, I, I can recommend this one and if you notice <laughs> they put a good blade stop on this why 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 would you not do that with the other one I'm trying to reach over here you could just see the difference why would you put such a chintzy one on the bigger one and put such a big blade stop on this little guy I, I just don't understand what they were thinking moving on the tactical now I left this in the packaging because a lot of you may have not seen the new packaging that Gerber has been using uh, I first seen this maybe about a month or two ago but I really do like it I like you know to me it's, it's a little more attractive looking but it is a pain to, to get the knife out of this thing you can see that I purchased this one at Dick's it cost me like thirty four dollars that I could probably get it for like twenty nine somewhere else but here's something that I really like that Gerber finally started doing they're putting the blade length which is three inches in this case and they give you the clothes length, overall length, weight is 4.6 ounces and they're telling you the blade steel so you finally get to know what the Gerber Mystery Steel is and again that's the 7CR17 MOV which is the Chinese equivalent of 448 now the difference between this and the other knives is you get a G10 handle so you get G10 scales on this and it's also a tonneau style blade and you got like a thumb plate here instead of ambidextrous thumb stud so let's go ahead and get this open and take a closer look so it's nice that Gerber gives you this little point protector so you don't stab yourself while you're trying to get out of the impossible packaging let's see it's feeling pretty stiff pretty gritty wow it's not the most uh, confidently locking blade there there we go it's worried there for a second now this thumb plate which they're putting on there instead of the thumb studs <laughs> it's stiff Ugh. Um, does have some jimping there so that feels pretty good and again you get that hole that makes for all that comfortable different types of grips that are very unique to the remix series Let's see how the reverse grip feels. Oh, very good. This is the best out of them all. And you can see why compared to, um, where's the standard one? Here. You can see the difference. How that looks. So that definitely is a much more comfortable reverse grip. You can see the handle also is a little bit longer. Even though the blade length is about the same. It's about 3 inches. This is 2.9. They're almost the same. You get those G10 scales, very grippy. We'll take a, let's take a, a real close look so you can see what that texturing looks like. <laughs> That's it. That's the limit of my camera there. So not too bad. Let's take a look at this liner lock, and it's uh, right where you want a new liner to be it's it's early but it's well behind the tang there so gives you that room to wear but it is just so stiff oh man it's just terrible so again I'm gonna have to do that <laughs> 1000 whatever listen to that that's terrible <laughs> it's gritty um, you know, I haven't tested the lockup on any of these. Lockup appears to be solid on all of these knives. No play. And the little guy. Now be careful with these little ones. They're the ones that always get you. You know, the only knife that's ever cut me during a video was a little CRKT kiss <laughs> two timer. Uh, so, anyway, tunnel, blade, 
again hollow ground halfway up it's uh, partially serrated and you can see they skeletonized out these scales and the stainless steel liners to try to lighten it up but this is about the heaviest of the three uh, let's see 4.6 ounces so it's a couple of uh, tenths heavier um, again that's probably due to the handle being just a little bit bigger here's the clip can't really move it to the other side I don't understand why they didn't make that they could have done that very easily made it so they couldn't well I can see why they didn't do it they're cheap and this does have a slight curve to it so if they gave you if they had the the holes here that mounted on the other side they would have had to give you a second clip or they could have just made this straight I don't know come on Gerber <laughs> um, but feels very very comfortable but again be very careful when you're stabbing with these type of knives because again if your knuckle is up against the the edge right here you're, yeah it's gonna hurt just a little bit <laughs> you gotta be careful but you know what if I'm doing this and I'm not screwing up my finger okay no problem now the uh, point that I made about the the fine whittling work because of the acerations that's really ruled out um, the only way to whittle with this is to choke up on the blade all the way up here then you can do some fine work but generally you don't use a tonneau blade for whittling as far as the best EDC out of the three I think this one gives you the most capability the standard version but if you're looking for a stronger blade and want to cross over it to being tactical again this new one that just came out this year or late last year the tunnel style Gerber tactical might have your name on it and um, can I recommend it well you are going to have to do a lot of work to get this thing to open up one handed easily it's going to take some oil I used um, so this pro, you know, this is from Pro Shot. This is zero friction, and I really made a mess. And I might as well just do it here. I could show you what I did, so you guys can uh, do the same thing if you do decide to do this. But I like how the Pro Shot has these pin, these little needle things. I know there's some other brands that have it too. You just sort of get that down there. Get some on the. A detent ball bearing on the liner. Put some up here. By the way, these things do have a uh, liner washer or liner nylon washers in there. And then you just sit there and <laughs> do this about a thousand times. Already feeling a difference. By the way, this this blade does have a coating, unlike these other one. You know, each one of these blades have a different type of finish. The mini has a sort of a brushed look. The standard has a bee blasted look, and the tactical looks like it has a titanium nitrite coating on it. So each version has a different blade um, coating on it or finish on it. Listen to that. So this is going to take a little bit of work. Let me see if I could at least get it. There we go. I could get it out one-handed. Um, I know my other one took a lot. <laughs> wow, this is going to take a lot of work. This particular clip right here that just started is a day later. And I'm sort of editing it into this video. And the reason why is I can't with good conscience post this video recommending this knife because after a day of trying to <laughs> loosen this thing up it just would not loosen up or smooth up and I think I know why as a matter of fact I know why I actually took this whole knife apart which was a nightmare and if you can look at the metal you could see the rough finish that this has it has these like grooves that are going back and forth here well those extend into the pivot area so 
you know you have a lot of pressure here and this is a rough material and that creates a, a lot of friction in this pivot area so this knife will never ever get as smooth as this this I've gotten just extremely smooth this thing even after taking the blade out and trying to buff out some of these ridges um, I still can't <laughs> get it smooth so there's no way you'll ever through even a thousand times or uh, a million times we'll ever get this to smooth out because of the way this blade is finished here with these ridges that continue back inside the blade which is like a ring and it's just rough so you know what this thing will never flip open easily and it's always going to be rough this is a piece of garbage it's been engineered or designed or manufactured or all of the above like a piece of crap can't recommend it especially for what I paid for it 34 bucks I'm pissed off because that was a waste of money so do not absolutely do not recommend this gets a 1 out of 10 my worst rating of any knife is <laughs> it's a Gerber and it's the Gerber uh, Remix Tactical this particular one I will not recommend the other ones are fine especially if you get a good deal on them this one piece of crap uh, it, I'll tell you what it's you know the difference between a good knife and <laughs> a cheap Chinese knife <laughs> it sounds terrible so um, I thought I made a big mistake even with $24 with the standard but after breaking it in and getting it smooth um, I love this knife I really do it, it feels so unique and different but I still sort of grow uh, grown attached to it this whole when you're bored you just find yourself doing this and uh, all the videos on YouTube where people are reviewing remixes they're doing this because it's addictive it just somehow <laughs> draws you to do it and if you're ADD or one of those types, man, you're just always going to be. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. This was a long video, but I did review three knives. So if you hung in with me, I really appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate every friend, viewer, and subscriber. And again, really appreciate you having a great evening.